Okay. So, so I will continue uh, <clears throat> what we started uh, this morning. So this is uh, the, the model uh, uh, I presented. So uh, U is a fixed direction, then you have the VI plus or minus one plus Gaussian noise, and you are revealing a fraction of the uh, of the <clears throat> of the information. Uh, I define the uh, since I had a question on this. Uh, my, um, all the plots are for this quantity. Uh, what I'm calling the base risk, where the statistician knows everything about the param parameter of the model, knows the models, and uh, the statistician does not have any constraint in terms of resources in uh, computation or anything. So he's able to compute this uh, inf here over all the, the possible estimator. <laughs> okay, so this is okay, apparently. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and, <clears throat> and again, uh, the risk, it's not measured on the training set, but it's on the test set. And to model this, I'm sampling a new sample with the same distribution but it has not been seen by the algorithm before. Okay. So uh, all the, uh, you obtain, <coughs> uh, so we, we described it basically a uh, two algorithm. Uh, the first one, the Oracle, where you are given in addition the, the direction U and the fully supervised case where you, uh, you, uh, you see all the labels uh, corresponding to the case Eta equals one for me. Uh, and you see that uh, for both cases, what we did is we took a specific algorithm and we computed the performance of this algorithm. Okay. It's not clear a priori that uh, the performance of this algorithm is actually optimal. Okay. So there is a gap here. Uh, and in the rest of my lectures, actually, I will not concentrate on algorithm, but directly compute uh, <clears throat> the best possible uh, achievable performance. So what people call uh, information theoretic uh, limits uh, for, for such uh, in such setting. So my analysis will not be directly connected to a particular algorithm. Also for the presentation, it's easier to present an algorithm and to give you uh, what is the performance of this algorithm. And in, in both cases, it turns out that this algorithm are optimal. So here is uh, the general formula <coughs> on the plot. So again, uh, this is the risk evaluated on the test set, not on the train. Uh, so this is, for, this is why, for example, in the, the supervised algorithm uh, on the label data only is performing uh, worse than the unsupervised a setting uh, with a, in the small uh, label data regime. So it's, uh, there, is, there should be no contradiction. So is, is there any question on, on these two plots before I'm going uh, on? I don't know if uh, there are people in the chat, but I, 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 I'm not monitoring the chat, so uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry, is it possible that? The supervised one is. Uh, what do you mean by uh, overfitting? Yeah, so so basically it means the the test set is minimized, but for the training set, it's uh, it's poorly generalized. It's what? It's poorly generalized. The the supervised one. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure I understand your question correctly. My my measure of performance is uh, is it's it's on the test set. Yeah. So I'm taking the infimum. Uh, so so th this is the best uh, possible generalization error you can get. So there is no notion of overfitting. I mean, it's not related to any algorithm. Indeed, uh, okay. my plot. Yeah. It's 
But th then what would happen if you change the alpha? So it will change the, <clears throat> okay. You see that, for example, uh, the value here of one, uh, where you have the back Benaus Peche FS transition, I told you, this will change. Okay. So th this, but uh, the general picture will be uh, globally the same. You will rescale those things. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Is there any other question? Uh, I mean, here I want to do a 2D plot. So since I have three uh, parameters, I need to fix uh, some of them in order to do. Uh, so this is why I choose alpha equals one, but there is no special uh, property of uh, this one, alpha being one. <coughs> so I, I, will, uh, uh, I will try to convince you that uh, this weird mathematical formula has, uh, to give you a little bit of intuition be behind it. Uh, in a non-rigorous uh, way. And in the rest of my lecture, I uh, will look at uh, a simpler model, uh, but give uh, the details of the mathematical proofs. So uh, if you want to do a, a non-rigorous proof, you need to make assumption that will allow you to, to do uh, easy computation. And the main assumption uh, that is not easy to show at least directly is uh, a kind of a <coughs> concentration result. So uh, uh, again, uh, the two algorithms uh, uh, we saw are uh, basically uh, based on you first get an estimate of the U direction. In the Oracle, it's given for free. In the other one, you are averaging. Uh, and then based on this uh, best possible uh, estimation of you, you, you get the best est estimation for the new label. So the best estimate for you is actually uh, the mean of you uh, condition on what you are seeing. So the data, Y on the side information. And the best est estimate of V is the same thing condition on Y on, uh, on S, okay? Uh, <clears throat> what we will assume is that when in the regime where n, the number of samples on the dimension is tending to infinity, uh, the correlation, so the cross product between this quantity, so which is a random variable of depending of, uh, on, on y on e, s, uh, converts to, to a parameter which is between zero and one. Okay, so this is a scalar product, so this is a, a scalar, and uh, you are averaging a lot of uh, quantities. Uh, unfortunately, they are not IID, so you, you cannot uh, assume that there is a, a low of large number with a trivial result, but you are still uh, <coughs> making the assumption that it will concentrate towards a, a fixed value that is not random. Okay, so Q star of, uh, of U here, uh, this is a, a number which depends only on the parameter of the problem between zero and one. Okay, so this is a, an assumption we are making. On, there is a symmetric uh, assumption on V. Uh, <coughs> so for V, since you have plus and minus one, uh, this dot product, uh, this, uh, yes, uh, uh, dot product, uh, you have uh, roughly N term of order one. So you need to rescale it by one over N in order to, to, exp to hope for a, a concentration result. Okay, so this is why there is a one over N here. There is no rescaling here because you are on the unit sphere. So basically, when the dimension is increasing, you are <coughs> shrinking all the components of you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so this is basically the only assumption we we'll make. And uh, actually, though I have no proof for that, but if you are making this assumption, the rest of my argument can probably be made uh, rigorous quite easily. Unfortunately, we are not able to, to prove this directly. Uh, on, on, <laughs> we'll, I will show you how we proceed uh, with more mathematical details uh, later. So a uh, first consequence of uh, your assumption is uh, you know that uh, the norm of uh, this random vector, again, this is a vector depending on y on uh, the side information, uh, is exactly the same. So this equality, it's uh, basically, uh, Base rules. We'll see uh, it uh, later if you are not convinced. Uh, 
So the, the norm of this vector is basically the same since you, you expect this random quantity to converge to something, the expectation will converge to the same thing. So it should be roughly of the order uh, Q star of U. Now you do exactly uh, as in the Oracle algorithm, you take your best estimate for U and uh, for any uh, sample in your data set, uh, you, <coughs> you can take the scalar product of your best estimate U bar with uh, what you are seeing and you obtain this equation. The first term here, uh, by my assumption is converged to a scalar, Q star of U. So you see that it's Q star of U, so you are rescaling the signal, VI is a plus or minus one. Uh, and then you have this new uh, noise term, okay? So in order to, uh, <coughs> to analyze this, uh, you need to compute the variance of this, uh, this, uh, this noise term. So again, uh, I'm not rigorous here, but uh, you 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 expect uh, to have uh, <coughs> that the z i will will not impact much the expect value of of u. So this should be a roughly uh, a Gaussian random variable with the variance being the norm of the vector u uh, over here. The norm of the vector u is q star of u. Okay. So this is Gaussian uh, a centered Gaussian with a variance q star of u. Now you end up with, so you, you see that here you are dealing with scalar. So you started with a bunch of uh, uh, equation in dimension D. By projecting everything on U star, you end up with only a scalar uh, equation, uh, which is very simple and it has a, the following form. So this is uh, what people call in, uh, <coughs> uh, in information theory, a channel, uh, where you have a signal which is a denoted square root of gamma times V plus additive noise. And you are observing the output. You want to, to have a guess on the, on the signal V. Okay. So this is exactly uh, this channel with the square root of gamma being uh, <coughs> uh, Q star of U. Now, uh, if you uh, know a little bit about uh, information theory, uh, you uh, or actually a basic statistic here. You want if you want to to uh, minimize the mean square error uh, for the evaluation of uh, again the, the the estimator of v. This is just the expectation of v knowing the uh, the output. Okay, and I'm denoting the minimum mean square error. Uh, with this, so this is an explicit uh, function uh, of uh, gamma. There is only one parameter here. V is plus or minus one with probability one half, and the variance of the noise is one. Okay, so the, there is only one parameter. So the mean square error, the minimum mean square error is given by, by this. Is it clear? So this is uh, perhaps a weird uh, <coughs> uh, a function, but uh, it does uh, exist. Uh, now, okay, here you see that the variance of my nose is one. So uh, to go from this equation to this one, I, I need just to rescale the, my equation in order to get uh, a variance one for the noise. So this is done uh, by this rescaling. And you see that you have uh, the best possible estimator. So again, in terms of uh, mean square error, and this is a, a mean square error that we will use uh, during this course, and I will explain why uh, in a moment, uh, <coughs> is, is achieved by taking uh, this uh, expectation, uh, this condition, conditional expectation, and you have an explicit formula for the, uh, the, the associated uh, mean square error, okay? Which is uh, with this weird function uh, that I'm calling uh, MMSC of uh, V. Is it clear or okay? Yes. So this is just uh, uh, for notation purpose. So sorry. Well, gamma is just a parameter of my. Uh, so I mean, I, I'm taking square root of gamma because uh, it it makes uh, more sense 
I mean, you, you can take uh, gamma as soon as it's positive, it's okay. So just a uh, rescaling of the signal to noise ratio. Yeah. Yes, so this is what I said very quickly here. You, you see that uh, I have a, a parameter in front of my signal VI, and there is uh, this is not a Gaussian, uh, a standard Gaussian random variable. This is a Gaussian random variable with this variance. Now, if I want to fit with uh, this channel, I need to rescale my nose in order to get a variance of one. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm rescaling by sigma square root of q star of u in order to, to end up with, and I mean, this is the main reason why I'm, I'm choosing square root of, of gamma this is because I have the square root of a quantity uh, here. So I want to write the quantity itself. So gamma is q star of u divided by sigma square. Does this make sense? Okay, so now uh, assuming that this is a, a, a sufficient statistic for estimating the highest component of, uh, of uh, VI, uh, we, we will replace it in, in this, we will compute the mean square error uh, in another way. So the, the mean square error is just uh, the error you are making on the estimate of V, so this is uh, this formula. Uh, and I'm decomposing, so the, in this sum, you have the label data. Uh, for the label data, you will have uh, <coughs> uh, no loss of information, okay? So this difference is zero. As soon as I'm giving you the VI, uh, you, you are replacing by the true value, so it's zero. So the only contribution uh, in this uh, mean square error are due to the unlabeled data, okay? And the, remember that the side information is SI, and when SI equals zero, uh, this means that SI is not plus or minus one. So this is uh, the, 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 the unobserved uh, label of the, of the data. Now I'm, I'm just saying, okay, this uh, the V bar, what I computed is actually the true, uh, so, what I, I, I computed uh, here in this uh, channel is actually the true, uh, post, uh, sorry, uh, conditional expectation of V. So I'm replacing the here and I'm, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit in this equality here. And I'm computing uh, now this quantity, it's given by this one over here. So it's one over N, the sum only on the unlabeled data of my weird MMSC uh, function with my particular gamma. So since I have a fraction one minus eta of unlabeled data, this is one minus eta uh, times the uh, MMSC of N. Okay. Now, uh, again, I did not use the assumption I made on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on V bar. So remember that V bar is uh, at the top here. So here, the small, uh, the, the, the modification I made is that I say that the, my V hat is equal to this. So I'm computing the true uh, conditional expectation with my, with this uh, formula. And here uh, I'm using the assumption uh, I'm making on the conditional expectation of V. So this is exactly the same argument as uh, what I did before uh, for the norm of U. Uh, you can show that uh, basically I'm making this assumption, which implies that the norm of V hat is also uh, Q star of V. So again, Q star of V is not random. So in the end, uh, when uh, you are replacing uh, this e equation in the left part over there, you obtain that one minus Q star of V, which is exactly the mean of this, is equal to the right part over there. So you end up with, uh, I did compute the mean square error for uh, my estimate of V in two different ways, okay? I end up with two, uh, two different uh, expressions, one in terms of Q star of V, one in terms of Q star of U. So the two should be equal, and this is uh, the first equality between Q star on U and Q star on V, okay? Now, the, the problem is uh, completely symmetric, so I will probably uh, go uh, faster on this. I'm doing basically the same thing, uh, but on the, instead of starting with the U vector, I'm starting with the V vector, the estimate of V. 
I'm doing exactly the same thing as before. I will end up with a scalar channel again, uh, which is uh, of this form. Uh, there is one uh, difference. The, the, the general formula for the channel is basically the same. There is one main difference uh, with the previous one is now you here, it's not the plus minus one. It's a, a Gaussian random centered uh, Gaussian uh, random variable. Okay. Uh, in particular, when you will compute the mean square, minimum mean square error for this channel, it will not be the same as the previous one because you do not have the same prior on the signal. And indeed, uh, in this particular case where both the signal is a Gaussian random variable and the noise is a Gaussian random variable, this is uh, the, what probably the first uh, uh, channel you study in uh, information theory, uh, in a course in information theory. Uh, and you, you can compute everything explicitly. So now, you, again, uh, your best estimator is the conditional expectation. Uh, but the minimum mean square error, which was a weird function that I did not explicit before, it's uh, fully explicit now. And it's a very simple function of the gamma parameter. Okay, so if you are familiar with uh, information theory, this is a very standard uh, result. And again, uh, I'm, do, I'm doing exactly the same assumption uh, as what we did with the uh, V vector, but with the U vector here. So I'm ending up with uh, one expression on, uh, for the mean square error of my estimator. I'm doing the <coughs> same thing uh, as, bef uh, as before, and I'm uh, ending up with uh, a new uh, equation related Q star of U and Q star of V. Uh, but now this uh, MMSE of U is much simpler than the one before. When I'm putting everything together, I end up with uh, two equations with two unknown. So the first one is the first computation uh, we did with, again, this is an explicit formula, but uh, it's long, quite long to, to write. And this, is, this has the second equation here is uh, hidden, it has the same form as the first one, but the MMSC uh, function is explicit now. Okay. So <clears throat> if you are making the assumption that uh, uh, on, on the conditional expectation at the beginning, uh, converging to the Q star of U and Q star of V, then uh, you should be convinced that uh, this parameter, so again, these are scalar now, uh, should satisfy this uh, fixed point equation. Okay. Now, the, the last part is, uh, okay, try to translate this fixed point equation into a uh, performance measure uh, for the empirical risk. And again, uh, we do uh, the same trick uh, as what we did uh, with the Oracle algorithm. Since we have access to the best possible estimator with this U bar, <coughs> uh, you take the scalar product of your new sample with this U bar, you obtain uh, you, you go from a, a vector uh, equation to a scalar one, which is uh, much easier to, uh, to, to analyze. What you, so this is always uh, a scalar channel with additive Gaussian noise. What you need to be careful about is uh, what is the prior on the signal. So here the, the prior, again, it's a discrete distribution with plus minus one rescaled by this parameter. And you, you end up with a, uh, uh, your best estimator is a sign of your the cross dot product between u bar and y nu. Remember that in the oracle you had access to the real u, so, but so you end up with a, a formula like this. Okay. So well, <coughs> and for so it's almost uh, like in 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 my uh, my claim here. Oops. So you see that it has exactly this form, but the definition of the Q star is, is not the same. Here, I, I did define the Q star as a solution of a fixed point equation. There, there was a Q star of U and Q star of V, and I had two equations. So if you want to connect uh, the fixed point equation to this uh, weird function here, you need to do a little bit more uh, of math. Okay. So this is a fixed point equation. <coughs> uh, 
and uh, basically you, you need to show that uh, the solution of the fixed point equation correspond to the optimum of my uh, f function and this is uh, done by what is called in information theory the IMMAC theorem so again we will see that uh, in, in more details uh, a little bit uh, later what you need to remember here is that uh, if you compute the mutual information uh, of the scalar channel uh, I just show you, uh, this mutual information is connected to the minimal mean square error uh, that I computed. Namely, here I'm, I'm, I'm computing the derivative of this. So you see the, this mutual information uh, as a function only of the gamma parameter. Okay. And taking the derivative of this function with respect to gamma gives you uh, the minimal mean square error. Up to one half. No? Okay, perhaps there is a one half uh, missing. Uh, yes, probably. But no. And uh, now you, you, can, uh, you, you can check uh, that uh, the function I gave you is indeed uh, the mutual information of the corresponding channel so that when you take the derivative, you will end up with the MMSC uh, equation. And Q star of U uh, is a unique minimizer of, the, of this function. And you end up with uh, the result of the, of the theorem. Okay. So, at least if you only care about uh, an explicit formula for such type of problem, uh, this uh, uh, type of argument will give you uh, uh, an analytic uh, uh, solution. Uh, if, you, if you want a, a, a proof, uh, unfortunately, we, as I said, we are not able, um, I don't think there is any uh, easy way to show the main assumption I took at the beginning, the concentration result. And indeed, the concentration result are more a consequence of the final formula. And so what we did with Leo Mulad is basically directly computing the limit of the mutual information. And from this, you will obtain all the subsequent results that I show you here. And in particular, you see that a posteriori, you can check that uh, the, the main assumption, uh, concentration of the overlap, this is a, it's called, uh, I think in, in physics, a uh, sample from the posterior times uh, U will concentrate to, uh, to a scalar uh, is a byproduct of our proof, but we, we are not able to show it uh, in an easy way directly. So be, <clears throat> in, an, in other words, uh, once, if you were able to, uh, I mean, we need to, to prove everything before in order to end up with the concentration result. Here I cheated quite a bit because I started with this concentration result and then show you that it follow the, the, the formula follow if you are making this assumption. Okay, I, I guess I will, uh, I will skip that and uh, go to, uh, to the proof. So I will switch to, so I have still 15 minutes, like something like that. Uh, to the blackboard, I want to start. Uh, is, is there any question on this before I'm, I'm, I'm stopped? Yeah. What's the problem with the, the concentration hypothesis? At the, the what basis? is the problem? Yeah. The problem is I don't know how to prove it. Okay, but, but why is it not reasonable? I know ah, it's, well, it's, it's, it's more than reasonable because it's true. So, yeah. so uh, in the end, I'm showing it, but uh, if you want, uh, the, the way I'm doing my proof, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm proving everything before, and I'm, I'm, I mean, the last point is to prove the concentration result that I started with here. But if you, so if you have, uh, I don't know, if you come up with a very simple argument showing this concentration result first, then all the rest will follow uh, quite easily. So in a sense, I think that this concentration result contains all the information you need to know about the about your uh, about your. This is the most difficult part, if you want, uh, of of the proof. But yeah, this is. Uh, 
more phys I don't know if Jean will agree with that <laughs> or other physicists, but uh, okay, thanks. Uh, C'est bon, là? So it's okay, I can move on to. So for the uh, technical part, uh, what I had in mind is uh, fast learning is to start with uh, some tools in uh, Bayesian inference. So this is what we'll do. Uh, we'll start today and we continue probably tomorrow. So, uh, so probably so today on, on, uh, on the first course of tomorrow we'll concentrate on this on a very simple model where properly uh, mean square error, minimal mean square error, and so on. So basically all the concepts uh, I showed you here in a general setting. Uh, so this, I mean. This is probably the most important part of the lecture because this, these are, uh, if you are not familiar with uh, with them, these are uh, kind of basic uh, uh, results in, in in statistics. And then I will move on to uh, uh, information theoretic limits for the spike Wigner model and uh, show you how to use these tools in this particular setting, which is a little bit simpler than. Uh, the semi supervisor. So I will uh, <coughs> give you a proof and then uh, some application uh, of uh, this uh, result. Uh, also connected. Uh, Laurent might, will speak out uh, today on uh, community detection for the stochastic block model, so a random graph model. Uh, to uh, PCA on the uh, and then perhaps if I have time, I will speak about uh, another application of uh, random matrices uh, at the very end of, of my talk. But uh, okay, so let's start with uh, tools in, uh, in, in uh, Bayesian inference. So I will start with, uh, as you see, the, there is a model I really liked. So I'm uh, underlying uh, because uh, th this means that uh, I'm considering vectors instead of colors, and uh, I'm taking a capital letter for random variables. <coughs> okay, so this is uh, what we just saw. So X has a, a prior distribution P of X over Rn. <coughs> We will assume that it has a finite second moment, and that's it. And then the Z I ID, uh, and this is independent of X. Okay, or if you want, the covariance matrix is uh, identity. So the parameter lambda is a signal to noise ratio. So also in, in this part of the course, I will introduce uh, the, the, the basic vocabulary that is used uh, both in statistics information theory uh, related to, 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 to my model. And okay, when people say we are in the base optimal setting, This means that uh, the statistician uh, knows everything. So the model, uh, the prior P of X and lambda. Okay, so this is the setting. 
uh, you are in dimension n here, uh, nothing is turned into infinity uh, for the moment. So now you need to uh, define a, a measure of performance. So as you saw, uh, I like the mean square error uh, and you will see later why. So the mean square error of an estimator theta hat is Okay, so this is uh, also a vector. <coughs> so any measurable function of, of the y. Uh, so this, this is uh, true for any estimator you are given to me on the minimum mean square error. Uh, it does not depend on a particular uh, estimator. So it only depends the uh, typically, we put explicitly the dependency to lambda, but it also depends on uh, P of X. <clears throat> and this is, by definition, the minimum of all the theta at of the mean square. Error. So, uh, what is uh, <coughs> uh, what is the function achieving the minimum here? Yes, yeah, the conditional mean of x given y. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so this is just uh, by Pythagorean theorem. So, and uh, we will uh, be interested uh, not only in the posterior mean, but in the posterior distribution. Okay. Of x given. So if you allow me to write it like that. So again, uh, well, uh, I hope, I mean, is the notation are unclear, please, uh, please ask me. So this is proportional to uh, so th this small x uh, is for a particular realization of the random variable, right? Okay. So this is a function of the small x here, which is uh, the density of the prior, if you want to be rigorous. And then uh, I'm under this, I mean, I need to encode the fact that the, of the additive uh, noise. So this is um, my square root of lambda x. Okay, so what is uh, very simple is uh, <coughs> to compute the posterior of y given x. This is uh, basically given here. I want uh, the, the, the opposite, the posterior of x given y. So I'm basically applying Bayes rule. I look at the joint distribution. And now to, <coughs> to get, so you get, let's call it dp x. Knowing why this is just okay, <clears throat> I'm marginalizing uh, the why. And I have a normalizing a constant here to get a, a distribution uh, with mass one. And this comes from just uh, uh, <coughs> this equation where I remove the y square. I, I mean, the part that depends on here, the y, I'm marginalizing it. And uh, this uh, z, which is called the partition function, so I write it here. This is just the integral of the numerator. Uh, 
and I will introduce a new notation. So name is the Hamiltonian. <coughs> H of lambda y x is equal to this term. So this is a random term, the y is random. And I will also write it uh, like this. This is Hamiltonian. Okay, so here uh, what I did, I just changed uh, y by its expression in, in, in function of uh, big X on Z. Okay. So, it, I mean, the notation is uh, perhaps a bit uh, weird because here I'm making the explicit dependency in Y and so why it disappear in this expression? So you need to be a bit careful. Okay, <clears throat> but, but in any case, this is a, a random function of a, a small x. And uh, we'll introduce an important notation. Uh, for the expectation, With respect to uh, this posterior, so I call it Gibbs brackets. I don't know. I think it's standard. Like this. So, so this, uh, I mean, this is only a notation, but it's very important. Uh, this bracket, so I will not use the bracket to define the standard Euclidean dot product. Okay. You need to find another symbol. This bracket is just when you are taking uh, expectation with respect to this uh, random variable. So this is again, <coughs> this, I mean, there is an expectation, but it's still random. No, no, it's not, it's, it's a condition on Y, so it's random. You need to take another expectation if you want to, to, to have something. Uh, so it's knowing big Y. So why the, the notation, you do not agree with this notation? Well, yes, you, you, you can put it like that if you, if you, if you want, it, it depends on why. So, I mean, the explicit formula, you, you can write it uh, like this, is uh, one over on here, yeah, you. But you see, I'm making disappearing uh, the index. So here, the why it's not explicit anymore here. Actually, I'm removing it here too, but you, you, it's completely correct that it depends on Y. F of X, and then you have the Hamiltonian. Okay, so this is a meaning of this. So this is a short notation for this. Is there any question on, on, on this? Uh, I'm done indeed, I think. Okay, uh, I need just one minute to define a, a, a new entity. Sorry. Yeah. Can you tell me again how you going to write this? 
Which one is this one? Okay, so uh, what, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, what is easy to get, uh, what is given is the prior of x. Given x, it's easy to define the, the, the distribution of y, y knowing x. So I'm saying that the couple, uh, the law of the couple uh, x and y is just the product of these two of px times the conditional, this is the conditional law of y given x. And I did not bother computing the, 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 it's proportional to this quantity and then you need to renormalize it if you want to, to get a probability. Now, uh, in order to get this formula, you need to, uh, to take the condition with respect to the y. So you need to, to, to remove the dependency in y here. So uh, this is exactly what I'm doing here, but now I'm explicit with, with, with the normalization. So I will end this part with uh, one definition with a property. <coughs> so again, f of lambda is the expectation of the log partition function. So again, y is random, so this is random, I'm taking the log. So this is the free <coughs> energy and we have f of lambda Okay, so uh, I mean, uh, people doing statistical physics are probably familiar with this uh, notation and should not be surprised with this formula too. Uh, there is a energy term here on the non-tropy one, which is a mutual information uh, over there. And uh, it's probably uh, a good time to stop and to leave uh, you as an exercise the proof of this formula and uh, we'll start again tomorrow with that. The chairman, ah yes, yes, it's a, <laughs> is there any question uh, except the proof of this fact? <laughs> Notation are kind of clear. Okay, thanks.